What a waste. Goddamn stupid waste. That's uh, six, five, nine. Head, head! Carry on. Gentlemen, you want to see me? Yes, sir. Well, sir, given the setbacks we suffered out back, I thought you'd be interested to know the current end of the strike. What in the hell is this? Well, sir, the red areas indicate current Viet Cong concentration. We control these areas. Sir, I'd have to argue that. Who have you talked to about this? No one, sir. Now you get this straight. Outback was a victory. We took the objective. We drove off the enemy. Everybody knows that ours were beaten there. We lost 88 men, sir. 50 Don't more. lecture me! You spread defeatist nonsense outside this room, I will have you court-martialed. And the charges this time will stick. I want that overlay. See this? An important victory. 101 VC dead. <laughs> so what's the truth? It's the most miserable damn performance I've ever seen. Would you be willing to talk about this? Somebody has to. Look, John, I know you have a military career, and if we do this thing, a lot of people are going to read it. I understand. Start writing. South Vietnamese command has no interest in fighting the communists. The ordinary soldiers are willing, but their officer's priority is to protect Diem's regime rather than to stop communist insurgency. What about all those things that we get, the, the casualty figures, battle reports, the briefings? The numbers are all phony. They, they, they make them up. These, these battles are a joke. I mean, they, they attack areas that the VC have already vacated, or, or they attack from one side, and they leave the enemy a wide-open backdoor escape route. But surely American assistance has made some difference. Oh, yeah, that's helped. It's helped the communists. We supply guns to the peasants, and they turn straight around and give them to the VC. At Atbach, we were being shot down by our own weapons. The U.S. Army Advisory Program is a complete sham. Totally ineffective. forces opened fire in British protest. Killed nine of them. Can't get this guy to fight the communists, but he's willing to kill his own people. I should cover this. Yeah. 
It's okay. It's yeah. okay. Say it. I want him busted now. Get him out. General, he's got a month to go. Let's not stir up the press. Let him finish out, then we'll take care of him. Shit. Yeah. I gotta go. Give me your hand. What is it? For good luck. I'll be back. The shitstorm you caused back at home. We got cables from the Pentagon, Washington. We picked up some new friends. Who are those guys? Theon put his boys on us for reporting at back. Well, the truth hurts. We got something for you here. To Lieutenant Colonel John Paul Van from his good friends and admirers, the American Press Corps. Paddle <laughs> smoke. But you can use it to light a fire under the brass back at home. And depend on that. Bobby, thank you. Nick. John. John, I hope nothing I've written hurts you. Nothing can hurt me. Okay. Gentlemen. Give him hell, John. He was our hero. An officer willing to risk his career to tell the truth about Vietnam. He set out to spread the word to everyone and anyone who would listen. most concise kick-ass report in the history of the U.S. Army. Southeast Asia. Rubber, timber, and manpower. Southeast Asia. The communists want it. And we want to stop them. Oh, the communists want it. We want to stop them. Stop them. And in my hand, I hold the secret weapon to win the war in South Asia. Secret weapon to win the war in South Asia. In my hand, I hold the secret weapon to win the war in South Asia. Rice. Rice, gentlemen. Rice. To the Vietnamese peasant, it is everything. They fought the Chinese, the Japanese. They fought the French for their rice fields. The communists have hijacked that rebellion. They've hijacked that rebellion. This man, Ho Chi Minh, and his general Jap, have promised the farmers they will give them back their rice. While our man, President Diem... While our man, President Diem, continues stealing it. We must regain the goodwill of the peasants. We must restore the good faith of the people. To win the war in Vietnam, 
We must take back the rice revolution, throw out the rice dealers, and give them back their rice. We must wage war for the peasants, not against them. Build their houses. Don't destroy them. Kill the enemy with this instead of this. In short, we must harness the peasant revolution to defeat the communist revolution. Thank you. Outstanding, Colonel. Thank you, sir. I'm going to recommend that the Joint Chiefs hear this briefing as soon as possible. That's great news, sir. Be some mistake. I was assured that I would have an audience with the Joint Chiefs. It appears there was a conflict in scheduling, and uh, the chairman is anxious to hear your briefing at a later date. The old guard you closed know. ranks and I shut him out. Van resigned. His military career was ruined. That's what he led us to believe. But John Paul Van had no career. He was an outcast, a man whose dark past had denied him the general stars he thought he deserved. Where the hell were you last night? Well, well let's talk. No, no, don't tell me. Don't lie to me. I know where you were. Wait a minute, honey. Come on. Tell me this. Oh, honey, wait. You are a liar, you are a goddamn cheat, and you will never change. Don't do this. You don't know, do we this are now. Finished. I am so sick of putting up this front for you, for your career. <laughs> your career? You screwed yourself out of your career years ago. We are gonna do something or I am out of here. Come in, Mrs. Van. I think we've made some progress here. Good. Your husband has been quite forthright about his lapses. If I could just explain something. Often when military men get put in pressure situations, uh, they find themselves in a difficult position. They see sex uh, as a kind of an outlet. It's a release. Um, it's almost unconscious, you might say. I thought we came here to be honest with each other. I am being honest. Did he tell you about the housemates in Japan? Well, uh, Mrs. Van, we didn't go into every specific case. Oh, not every specific case. OK. How about the babysitter in Kansas? Go on and tell him. Uh, Mrs. Van, I don't, I don't think it's productive. This is a very specific case. He slept with our babysitter. She was 15 years of age. She told the army he was going to be court-martialed until he asked me to lie for him. No more lies, please. Tell him about your mother. That's enough. Please, tell him about Myrtle. This is where it all came from. We can talk it out, please. Mr. Van, maybe you would like to talk a little bit about this. That's it. Please. I, I can't do this. Tell me what it'll take to make you stay. I want a life for us. I don't want to be warehoused in some army base. You got it. Just don't bring Myrtle up again. Come on. Take it easy. 
talked to us yet. It's lunch. Thanks, Mom. I love ya. The regime of South Vietnam is president. Hey, I want to hear that. The end comes to an end in a wave of violence. A few days before the Army revolt, these pictures showed a man who seemed to have no premonition of the horrible death he was to meet. Oh, I love this song. Hey, Mom, what's that? Hey, Mom, what's that? Hey, Mom, what's that? Hey, Mom, what's that? interrupt this program for an important news flash. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, President of the United States, shot by an assassin as he drove through the streets of Dallas, Texas. He is three years old on this day, November 25th. He moves a pace apart from his mother and lifts his hand. What is that boy doing? Saluting his father. He's saying goodbye to his dad. And his flag one last time. renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action in reply. We intend to convince the communists that we cannot be defeated by force of arms or by superior power. General Wayne, please. Lieutenant Colonel John Van Colley. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, sir, I resigned my commission, but I knew I couldn't get through. Everybody's fine, thanks. I'm doing great, just great. Well, no, I'm not. Fred, I'm dying here. I need to be in on the action. Anything, Fred, I mean anything. There must be something I can do, anything at all. I understand. You can't fight this war without me, Fred. Okay, I appreciate it. Goodbye. John, you're supposed to be at the productivity meeting. Oh, yeah, all right. I'll be right along, Don. Hello? Hello, sir! Boy! Go in here! Shoot, Dad, shoot! Yeah, baby, he shoots! Hey, he's oh, up in the Line. Jesse Van, three seconds left. Come on, double team, double team, get him. Hey, what's up? Hey, honey. Let's go ahead. The army called me today. Guess what? They offered me a job in the civilian aid program. What is that? It's back in Vietnam. Vietnam. Wait. Oh, I see. Once oh, again, we're listen, gonna get listen, dumped. No, listen. This is another chance for me. I can't let it go. I know how to win that war. I tried. I thought maybe you could have been the kind of father you never had. Make sure I can have a decent home for these kids. Hey! Shoot! Let's go! Let's move! Order! Move! 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 move. Formation! Let's go! Let's go! Step on! Step on! Step on! Come on! Let's move out! Jump on there with the aid program. Where's my ride? Rad's right there, sir. You You are a soldier. I'll drive. Thank you.
<laughs> God damn, it's good to be back. Good to see you. Bro. Thank, Thank you, sir. Man, that's a lot of hardware they're unloading out there. Oh, that's phase one of General Westmoreland's three-stage plan. We put together a superior force, then engage the enemy on the battlefield. Three, wipe them out. <laughs> well, hell, Fred, I don't, I don't know if the enemy's going to go along with that plan. We're not fighting a conventional war here. You, you can't roll out the tanks like it's World War II. I mean, goddamn, hasn't the Pentagon learned anything in three years? John, you gotta learn to keep your mouth shut. It was a hell of a job to get you over here, even as a civilian. Now you're here to work with the aid program, right? You're right, Fred. Well, I read your briefing, and I agree with you. We gotta try and win these people over. That's why I want you to take charge of the aid program in the region around Bautrai. I'll get a good man to work with you. Let's try to put your ideas into practice. Okay. You're the boss. No, John. Westmoreland's the boss. Is that Van? John Van! John Van! Hell, I thought they buried you! <laughs> they tried, Stephen. Hey, Nick. Hey, Are you John. part of this Welcome USA back. program? We sure are. Doug Elder, Steve oh, Burnett, pleasure. from the time. Oh, it's a pleasure. The pleasure's mine. Come on! Gentlemen, General Westmoreland. Fred. At ease, gentlemen. The aid program is a uh, noble effort to bolster the civilian population in the hamlets and particularly to help them resist Viet Cong infiltration. Gentlemen, you are part of a great new mobilization. We now have at our disposal the best army that the world has ever known. We have the men, we have the materials, and we are going to stomp the Viet Cong into the ground. Thank you. Thank you. We'd now like to take this opportunity to uh, introduce you to your various counterparts. Fred. General, quick question. Can I ask you a question? I'd like you to meet John Paul Van and Doug Elders. Ronald in. Mr. Van, Mr. Elders, welcome. Thank you. I am your regional commander. We have a very good region, you and I. We will do well together. Look forward to it. Thank you. to the schoolgirls. Times change, John. They have more needs now. It's good to see you again. Look at you. You look different. You too?
Howdy. Welcome to Bow Try, guys. Terry Pike. John Van. Doug Elders. Nice to meet you. Do you know there's a Jeep outside of town with a body in it? Nobody buries them? <laughs> They're too afraid to go out there. Now, I don't mean to discourage you guys, but this place is gone. You see that bunch of kids standing over here? They're Viet Cong. Now our defenders either work for them or pay them off. So who's in charge? That'd be Colonel Din. I don't know if Charlie works for him or he works for them. Don't matter much, though, because nobody works for us. Well, maybe we should just hand it all over to the communists right now. Mr. Van, these people don't have any money. And they don't get a chance to vote. That sounds communist to me. Tan, devoy toy. Now, if you don't mind, it cost me 50 bucks to get Colonel Din to get me a military escort so I can get out of here. I better get before the price goes up. It's all yours. Stay alive, gentlemen. Jeez, what a mess. Okay, each family six or more gets one five-gallon can of cooking yes, oil, 100 pound sack of flour per month. Yes, sir. Doug, will you check the manifesto when this stuff's due in 10 one? Yeah. All right, we do what we call an inventory. It means everything that goes in and out of here gets counted for. You got 10 cans of cooking oil, nine sacks of flour, you write it all down. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, you tell these men to put these ladders right here. I want them up there to pull down any loose tiles. Yes, sir. I'm gonna replace with this core again. Hammer nails, bang, bang, bang. One there, one there. Rip out all the tiles around, leave them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What'd she say? She said to stop, she cannot pay. You tell her she does not have to pay. What was that? She said somebody will always have to pay. Children's Revolution. Oh, no, it's just candy. No, no, it's okay. It's, it's just gone. Oh, hey. For you, for the school. Yeah. Presents for the teacher, right? Kill and teach and all. Kill and teach and all. What's going on? You have used my material without paying. I'm sorry, Colonel, but this is aid material. Yes, my aid material. This is my region. It is my aid material, and you must pay. Yang Ling! Yang Ling! Oh, oh, oh. Put that down! Colonel, if you do not leave, I will disgrace you in front of your men and this village. Tell them then. Nếu can không đi, chúng tôi sẽ đuổi các ra khỏi quân đội. 